Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm very excited to be sitting down with Garlic von Essen, Secretary General of Euroseeds. And as we're in preparation for his Congress on October 24th to 26th in Berlin, Germany this year. Garlic, thanks very much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. Good afternoon, John. How are you doing? I am fantastic. I'm fantastic. Thanks for taking the time to sit down and have a chat. L the last time we sat down for an interview was was two years ago. Hard to believe that it was two years ago. You were busy navigating Euroseeds through the beginning of, of what we now know as the pandemic, organizing virtual events, ensuring members had what they needed to thrive. You're now preparing for Euroseeds in person Congress in Berlin in October. It's not the first in-person Congress you've had since the pandemic began. You were in Prague last year for an in-person gathering, which was spectacular. What's the biggest lesson you've learned during the pandemic that has is helping you to make this upcoming show an even more stellar one? Well, we'll do our best, but um, I think what we all realize is uh, you, you can do a lot of things using advanced technology. We all have learned to work remotely, to uh, work more with video conferencing, with that also making it easier for some of our members to join us, even if they either lack financial means to join physical meetings or if they're really very distant. But at the same time, we all see that you can't do without really in-person meetings. And that's, I think, what we saw last year already in Prague. Um, people really need to get together in person and look each other in the eye when they have their discussions. Um, and we can see that again now this year for Berlin. We are already beyond a thousand registrations uh, for this year. So we're expecting a very, very high turnout for this event. So I think it shows us we need both. Uh, we can indeed uh, use technology, make it a little bit easier also for international or regional associations such as ours to get together with our members and exchange. But at the same time, I think at least once a year, we need to have these kind of big gatherings where everybody comes together in one spot and where you can have discussions, not only obviously in the dedicated meetings, uh, but also beyond that, um, so the more social and, and uh, let's say informal exchanges uh, that you can have with these kind of uh, bigger congresses. Agreed. Be beyond coming together, Garlic, what, what's the one maybe highlight of the upcoming Congress that you would love people to know about? Well, I hope we're going to have more than one, but um, I, I hope that we will have um, a good conversation how innovation can help us to bring together productivity, food security on the one hand, and sustainability and environmental protection on the other. That's the overarching Congress theme, if you want. Um, so we, we'll try to make sure that we can really showcase uh, not only in breeding itself, but also all the technologies we're using in and around uh, plant breeding and seed production. So cleaning, processing, sorting, packaging, uh, you name it, um, that we can demonstrate uh, that we don't need to turn back a hundred years and think that that will resolve all our environmental concerns, uh, but rather we need to look forward and embrace innovations uh, as a means to really reconcile, that's our subject, reconcile uh, productivity, food security with environmental sustainability. So. I hope that's going to drive our policy agenda and also our discussion a little bit further in Europe. It's a big conversation and, and yes. it's important to be at the table for that conversation, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, there, there's lots going on in the world right now. I don't need to tell you that, uh, not the least of which is climate change. There's the invasion of Ukraine and inflation. So let's let's start with the fact that uh, Europe recently has been experiencing another scorching heat wave this of course causes challenges for your members in in all kinds of ways what are the biggest con concerns that you're hearing right now garlic well I think climate change obviously is a, is a principal concern and it also shows us how difficult it is uh, indeed for for a long-term activity such as plant breeding uh, to really keep the pace, no? to, to really keep up with uh, climate change, which we see getting faster no? uh, and the impacts becoming more severe. 
Um, so indeed, we are currently uh, in the middle of, of um, a severe drought. Uh, I just read that probably next week, uh, all our shipping activities on some of the main um, rivers in Europe will basically stop, need to stop because our rivers are running dry. Um, so all of that has severe impacts, um, not only in and around agriculture, uh, but generally speaking. So for sure, um, again, coming back to what we discussed earlier, uh, how can we accelerate progress in plant breeding that may help us cope with climate change? We, we're probably not going to reverse the climate change trend within a couple of years, but we need technology to help us deal with it in practice. Um, and there, I'm not only me, but I think generally we're convinced uh, that novel genomic techniques and other uh, things will or must actually um, be allowed to help us do that. Um, so in that respect, I think, uh, yeah, climate change is, is really at the top of the agenda. And like any year, uh, when you have these kind of heat waves or storms or floodings, uh, that, that's when we start remembering. But there is an underlying trend um, aside of catastrophes that I think uh, is the worrying, uh, the worrying thing for us. Agreed. Well said. So at the same time, the invasion in the Ukraine goes on. Um, yeah. This time last year, the idea that Russia would invade Ukraine was, was not something any of us were prepared for. How are your members coping and, and, and what do you see on the horizon of that front? Yeah, this, this is something that is um, particularly um, troubling for many of the European companies that have invested uh, in developing facilities in Ukraine on the ground. So we do have quite a number of companies that either have joint ventures or large scale corporations or have actually built their own uh, breeding and or seed production facilities in Ukraine. Um, not only because it's a lucrative market, of course, um, but also uh, because it is a, indeed a major agricultural country. Um, and obviously with that, uh, something that we all um, in the plant breeding sector um, try to bring our products to. So um, it, it's difficult to predict, uh, to be honest. What we do foresee is indeed some seed shortages uh, in some regions, depending on how this war is going to continue and to impact uh, the production, the harvesting, the storage. Um, so there's a lot of uncertainties there. Um, what we can say is that indeed for this season, so for the spring, fall last year, spring this year season, we have actually managed uh, to make sure that farmers get their hands on seeds. Um, so there has not been major shortcomings of seed supply. Um, to what extent that will actually materialize in respect of harvest later on this year, that's, I think, the big question mark that we all have. Um, so what we're currently doing, uh, very concretely, is we'll, we'll, we'll try to assess that situation with the help of our members, both outside and inside Ukraine, uh, and to see what is it that we can maybe do uh, to also help officials here in the European Commission, but also then in the EU member states, to think about what is it that we could do practically uh, to support farmers and and uh, the whole, entire agri-food chain actually on the ground in Ukraine. Yeah, precarious situation. And, and then of course the economy is on everyone's mind as prices rise and along with the cost of doing business, it's easy to get discouraged, but there's one thing I've learned about the European seed business it's how good people are at finding innovative ways of doing business in, in challenging environments. How are your mem members managing to thrive in that current economic climate? And then what is Euroseeds doing to assist them with that? Well, I think that you, you see two, two trends. Uh, one is, indeed, we see rising commodity prices, um, which is something that, generally speaking, should be good for farmers. And what is good for farmers usually also is good for farming input industries uh, because there is capacity for farmers to spend money on, be it machinery, be it technology, um, robotics, uh, drones, and all these kinds of things that we now see being generally introduced actually in, into uh, practical farming. 
but of course also improved varieties. Um, so that would be a potentially positive trend. At the same time, that is to a large extent offset by indeed rising costs, specifically for fertilizers, um, but also then, of course, fuel is is a, is an issue. Um, so, to what extent um, we really will see that farmers are capable and and, and willing uh, to even invest more uh, in advanced varieties is, I think, still still a little bit an open question. Um, what we try to do, obviously, is is uh, advise also towards the European Commission what can be done uh, in the area of agricultural policy in general, but also in seed-related policy in, in particular, uh, that would facilitate it um, and that would encourage farmers to make use of the best possible technology and products out there. Um, and we're convinced that specifically given the, the large share that breeding innovation actually has in driving productivity in, in agriculture. Uh, th this is a key area uh, where we need to concentrate efforts, both financially, but also from a political angle. Um, so we hope that with, with our translation role, maybe from, from, the, from the point of view between politics, larger scale politics on European level, and then really on the ground experience and, and needs uh, in the farming community, uh, that we can help uh, indeed improve the situation. Garlic, the European Parliamentary Research Service and its Scientific F Foresight Unit, they've published an, an in-depth analysis on new breeding tools and their potential role, role in the EU food system. Euroseeds has always been a big proponent of one new important tool, of course, gene editing. Unfortunately, there's a lot of regulatory challenges related to it. What is Euroseeds doing to try and pave the way to use this technology in the EU? Yeah, uh, we, we've been discussing this for, um, well, it feels like ages, um, for, for quite some time. Um, and I think what we have seen in the past three, four years uh, is that very slowly, maybe too slow, uh, we've started to make some progress. Um, I think people start realizing that uh, if you can do things faster and more precise due to innovation, due to increasing knowledge and ability to make actually technical use of that knowledge in plant breeding, um, that these kind of innovations need to be enabled rather than prohibited. And that legislation needs to be adapted uh, in order to make sure that we don't treat plants that are actually the same and are identical as far as their genetics and their, their production is concerned, that they're not dealt with with different uh, regulatory tools and, and, and frameworks. So we see some progress, but as you rightly said, it's slow, it's challenging, um, but we also see that other parts of the world have struggled with that. But maybe, uh, indeed, the current situation where food security has returned uh, to the top of the agenda of many politicians and in many parts of the world, uh, maybe that helps um, to get that reality uh, a little bit back into the political uh, debate. And we hope that by the end of this year, the Commission will finalize its preparatory work and that as soon as possible in 2023, we might see a legislative proposal uh, to the European Parliament and the Council of Ministers, so to member states, uh, that may help us make at least some progress. We're probably not going to uh, untie the Gordic knot uh, in one go, uh, but at least make some progress that we talked about climate change would really help us um, get faster, uh, get more precise, and with that, really realize the contribution that plant breeding may bring to resolve some of those issues. We've got lots of big issues to talk about in Berlin, don't we? Yeah, no shortage of those. I look very much forward to seeing you in Berlin, Garlic. I thank you very much for sitting sure. down with me today. I appreciate that and uh, and look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for your time. So do I. I hope uh, we'll have an exciting Congress and um, that you'll be uh, a happy guest uh, at Euroseeds in Berlin in October. Thank you, John. Thanks, Garlic. Cheers. Cheers.